very much for joining us. Big thanks to our live studio audience for joining us here in the flesh. <laughs> if you'd like to be in the audience, if you'd like to join me in the flesh, just jump online. <laughs> and head to the website you see on screen now. I may or may not be lying, but everyone in our audience receives their own private jet. <laughs> Well, that's not going to work out well for you guys. <laughs> going to bring you some highlights. Uh, just got a bit of time for a story we couldn't quite get to this week. Obviously, a lot of attention on the Gold Coast with the Commonwealth Games, but uh, there was another big announcement this week involving another great Australian city. Adelaide has been named this morning as the ice capital <laughs> of Australia. Congratulations, Adelaide! Woo! Ice capital, well done, folks. Tell them what they've won, Simon. Well, Tom, they've won more ice. Wow! <laughs> Fantastic stuff there. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> now, that, look, no, okay. <laughs> this has all come out in the latest report from the Australian Criminal Intelligence, Intelligence Commission's National Wastewater Drug <laughs> Monitoring Program. That's where a government agency combs through all your urine and feces <laughs> to find evidence of your drug use, which I'm sure is of great comfort to all those paranoid stoners out there. <laughs> Yes, Kyle, I'm talking to you. <laughs> the figures in this report suggest one in ten people living in Adelaide are using ice. <laughs> one in ten! <laughs> Makes sense. Whenever I'm in Adelaide, I'm always thinking, God, I wish I could be awake for longer. <laughs> Not to be outdone, of course, the report also shows when it comes to cocaine use, New South Wales is the highest in the country. <laughs> Which presumably means the people in New South Wales are also the highest in the country. <laughs> well, no! Calm down, New South Wales. Stop rubbing us in their faces with your fancy cocaine, all right? This is Adelaide's time to shine. <laughs> they very rarely get to be the number one city for anything, unless it's blackouts or murders, all right? So just let them have this, please. All right, let's do this highlight show. Have you guys heard of Gogglebox? Yeah. <laughs> Good. You love Wayne Swan and Gogglebox. That's what I know about you people. Gogglebox is a TV show where real people are filmed on their couches watching a variety of different TV shows, which then becomes a TV show for us to watch at home on our couches. It's a TV to duckin'. <laughs> and it's a very popular show. <laughs> People love hearing the cast opinions on everything from television to politics. Last night, the shows Anastasia and Faye went on Paul Murray Live on Sky News to talk politics and give a hot take on our hot PM. So I want you to give it to me straight, oh, Anastasia. Right. What do you think of Malcolm yeah. Turnbull? Look, I think he's hot. He's the hottest prime minister we've oh. ever had. Right? The hottest prime minister we've ever had. These are the opinions that need to be aired. <laughs> We need to get out of our lefty, liberal, latte-sitting bubbles and find out what real Australians think about the fuckability of our Prime Minister. Yes! She's clearly wrong, by the way. It's definitely Andrew Fisher. Look at that guy. Look at that moustache. Ooh, nummy nummy. Yes, please. You guys prefer Wayne Swan, I guess. But all this made me wonder, you know, when is Tonightly going to get on Gogglebox? I want to find out what real people think of me. I want to hear compliments and see them laughing at my joke. Okay, and being told that we were on Gogglebox here at Tonightly, we have the footage. This is exciting. Let's take a look. <laughs> Hello, everybody! Good evening! I'm Tom Mellon. This is Tonightly. Thank you for joining us. I feel like we're about to watch the gay underbelly. <laughs> Ooh! A ma! Do they drug test these people before the show? <laughs> Tonight we bring you stand-up comedy from French bon viveur, Marcel Lucan. Five minutes and all I've heard is introductions and bullshit. <laughs> I want a gangbang, not a bang-bang. Come on! I can't believe Australia is allowing this absolute wank stain so much airtime out of it. Thank God it's over. It's so painful, this show. <laughs> It's good to get feedback. <laughs> Someone pointed out that, like, in three of those clips, I'm wearing this exact same shirt. <laughs> ABC, baby. <laughs> now, it's time to do our bit and terrify you about another scourge in many of our capital cities. Greta Lee Jackson brings you this important Tonightly Investigatesly. <laughs> They're the new foreign menace, lurking in bushes, skulking in alleyways, some of them even loitering around your children while they're at school. 
That's right, share bikes. <laughs> These weren't always creepy pedophiles. They came here offering convenience to the people of Australia. But unable to assimilate, they became ostracised from society, left to a life of drugs, with some of them even turning to sex work. It's this damn mess of these high bikes that are being dumped all over the place. It's a mess, but we'll keep at it. We don't give up, nor do we give up on the flying foxes either. Hey, bats, rats in the sky. From the rats of the sky to share bikes, the flying foxes of the ground. Things soon went downhill, literally. These bikes don't have gears, making riding uphill impossible. And then the inevitable happens. It was on the weekend and I rode a share bike down to the bottom of the hill to get to the beach. And then um, I just couldn't get back up the hill again. Trapped at the bottom of the hill, he soon resorted to cannibalism. No, I just got a cab back up the top of the hill. But it gets worse. The hollow frame provides substantial space for shrapnel and explosives to be packed. It's just a matter of time before someone turns one of these things into a bomb, gets onto a plane and cycles into a building. What are you doing to bicycle-proof these windows? Um, well, nothing. I mean, we're on the 43rd floor, so it doesn't really... Exactly. Matter. So if a whole cycling club attacked you, it could be worse than 9-11. It could even be 11 out of 11. So, sorry, no, um, so 9-11, that wasn't a score out of 11, that was a date. <laughs> just... mm, that's a high score for flying bomb peddlers. However, it's down on ground zero where the rubber hits the road. Well, I was walking to work like I normally do and then I saw it. So I had to walk around, and now I'm 20 seconds late to work. This is taking up more time as well. I'm going to be really late. That was just one man, but multiply that by all of Australia, and that's millions of dollars lost in productivity due to share bikes. Could this be an attempt by the Chinese government to destabilise the Australian economy? The answer is probably definitely yes. In China, share bike companies like Ofo and Mobike are pumping bicycles out of factories at an alarming rate. Terrorist activity, cannibalism and even worse, blocking footpaths. But who benefits? That's right, communism. <laughs> One thing is for certain. We've got to put the brakes on before Mao's vicious cycle destroys Australia once and for all. I'm Greta Lee Jackson, <laughs> reporting for Tonightly Investigatesly. I may come across as a little cynical <laughs> when it comes to the Commonwealth Games. I must say, I do love the mascots in these games. Big fan of the mascots, love them. They're colourful, they entertain the kiddies, and they provide steady employment for NIDA graduates. OK, it's fantastic. <laughs> Currently, uh, Borobie is wowing them in Queensland. He's the mascot there. Look at the cute, the cuddly. Oh, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Who could forget in the Sydney Olympics when we had Millie, Ollie and Sid, fantastic mascots as well. They're great. But the question is, what's going to happen to them after the games? Where do the mascots go? What's going to happen to Borobie after the cheering <laughs> stops? Some mascots, unfortunately, hit rock bottom <laughs> and have to reach out for help. Luckily, there's somewhere they can go. People used to run up to me and kick me in the nuts. <laughs> Anything to be kicked in the nuts. One more time. <laughs> okay, guys, welcome. Let's stand, we'll kick things off. Pause, pause, hands. Whatever you've got. I'm no, no longer a mascot for the people. I'm a mascot for myself. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the Retired Mascot Support Group. Uh, my name is Bridie, although you might know me better as Millie, of Sid, Millie and Ollie fame. <laughs> Year 2000, I was adored, I was a hero. Uh, but that's behind me and I've been moving on and I try to help other mascots move on. I've tried to create a safe space here, a space that's really inclusive. Um, not to furries though, we're not really into the whole sex thing. Because I have chlamydia. Um, hi everyone, <laughs> my name is Lenny the Lion. Hi Lenny the Lion. I sometimes get recognised on the street, but it's mostly as the powder pop lion. Nobody cared who I was until I put on the mask. <laughs> Bane. 
<laughs> but seriously, I wish I was dead. I used to be a human counsellor, uh, but they're just not as cuddly. You know, mascots need a place to be vulnerable. Trust. Yes. <laughs> These people aren't used to sharing the spotlight and sometimes tempers flare. Guys, guys! No, 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 no. Hey, hey. The best ship of all is a friendship. <laughs> oh, hey, no, none of that. Sit down, Bradley. <laughs> Where do they go when they leave? Um, good question. Uh, some of them don't really have anywhere that they can go. Uh, they can't call anyone because they can't, you know, use their phones. Uh, they can't take their costumes off. Um, not till step eight. We're not quite there yet. Yeah. But uh, anyway, we're really looking forward to Boroughby joining us next year. <laughs> Marxism is a critique of the political economic system of capitalism, named after the works of 19th century German philosopher Karl Marx, or as I refer to him, Depressed Santa. <laughs> On Good Friday in Melbourne, over a thousand people turned out for the 2018 Marxism Conference, a conference where people come together to talk about how we need a mass working class revolution resulting in the overthrow of capitalism. It's kind of like Comic Con, except less realistic. <laughs> 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 Not happy with that. Typical ABC. <laughs> to be fair, after the 2008 global financial crisis, Brexit, Donald Trump and the rise of democratic socialists like Bernie Sanders and Jeremy Corbyn, some millennials are taking another look at the whole socialism thing and I wanted to take a look at them doing that. So I went along to Marxism 2018 to learn about the end of capitalism and also to make a sweet, sweet profit. <laughs> Greetings, comrades! The Marxism conference was on again in 2018, so I thought I'd head along. Because according to Twitter, I'm a supercilious, pasty-faced, left-wing cockroach who leads a privileged life courtesy of your taxes. <laughs> Thanks, Supreme Leader Guthrie. <laughs> Thanks, capitalism. The folks at this conference really believe that we need a Marxist revolution, so I'm interested to find out what that revolution might actually look like. Plus, because this is my key demographic, I want to find out if these dirty commies are actually watching my TV show. Because nobody else is, baby! Do you watch Tonight with Tom Ballard? I've seen clippets on Facebook. Thoughts? Hit and miss. Oh, What's the nightly? Well, it's my show, yeah. and it's very funny, and it's promoting the cultural Marxist agenda. Do you watch Tonight with Tom Ballard? I do, yeah. You do? Do I you think, think it's a Marxist program? Uh, close to it. I Ooh! Yeah. Well, it's good to know we're cutting through. I also sat down with some of the commie speakers at the conference, Indigenous activist Gavin Stanbrook, radio commentator and writer Helen Razor, and from the US, founding editor of Jacobin magazine, Bhaskar Sankara. Capital. Nice. Uh, Karl Marx. Yep. <laughs> Fucking nightmare. <laughs> have you read that? No. I have read that. The whole thing? You don't really have to read the whole thing. There's Thank chapters and God. Is that, is that all three volumes? I don't fucking know. I'm not going to read this. <laughs> Give me the one liner on Marx though. What's the deal? Capitalism is in crisis. We only have to look at what's going on around the world. Spain, the United States, Trump. These situations aren't an anomaly. They exist because capitalism reproduces the inequalities that exist in our society and Marxism is the guide to change. In the effort of uh, the revolution, mm -hmm. you've uh, written a book called uh, uh, A Total Propaganda, Basic Marxist Brainwashing for the Angry and the Young. Yeah, it's peculiar because it actually ended up being profitable. Capitalism, um... you're welcome. In the book you write, uh, Western people of the millennial age range are the first generation in several to be worse off in many basic ways than their parents. Yes. Not true, my parents did not have Tamagotchis. Oh, God. All right, let's break it down. How are millennials fucked? They will be worse off in that they have no job security. And that changes every decision that you make. You can't budget for the future. You don't know if your job will be there. I mean, it's simple. People have crap education, less money, no chance to get, a, you know, secure housing. People who own their own homes are healthier. And that's not just correlation, that's causation. You've got black mould in your house, you can probably use your mortgage as a piggy bank and get someone to fix it. I can't get my real estate agent to get the mould out of my house. Are you fan of Jacobin, hugely successful political magazine in the scheme of left-wing media out there. you got like over 30,000 subscribers, online audience of a million people a month. 
must be making some sweet dollar bills out of the socials and shit. Yeah, yeah actually not bad. You know, I, I, I earn $45,000 uh, a year. It's enough to uh, have a one-bedroom apartment in Brooklyn. Now you're an indigenous activist. I saw you at the Invasion Day rally in January. Yeah. I was there. You're welcome. Good one. Um, <laughs> name me one way in which indigenous people have been victim to capitalism. Well, I mean, the question of land. The question of land rights. Yeah, you think about it like, yeah. you know, the, the whole process of colonization in this country led to the mass genocide and theft of Aboriginal land. The reason that was yeah, done... but apart from that. Apart yeah. from the mass genocide and the theft of the land. Okay. Yes. Uh, well, there's another one. is just mass imprisonment, mass incarceration rates. Okay. Yeah, apart from that. Apart from that? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, just generally, you only have to look at the fact that, you know, Aboriginal people today are, are likely to uh, die 10 years earlier than their not Indigenous counterparts. Apart from that. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think America could become a socialist society in your lifetime? I think within my lifetime, you could imagine, like, a left populist like Bernie Sanders getting elected. He'll yeah, be 78. He'll be 78, but, you know, it's not that people are living longer and longer. He keeps putting out these, um, these videos of him, like, playing basketball. He's, like, banking it. I used to be a little bit better. So I can imagine, like, an and one, like, basketball mixtape of Bernie Sanders set to some hip-hop music. You know, we released that in 2019, and by 2020, you know, the kids will, will think he's, he's young and hip. Do you believe it's possible for a Marxist revolution to take place in Australia, we overthrow capitalism and we establish a socialist paradise? Yes. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, I'm sorry. How is the revolution actually going to happen? Marx does not go into great detail no. about <laughs> it. All fucking this, no guide to a revolution. <laughs> It's going to take mass action. And yeah. what that mass action looks like... That's not going to happen. That's definitely going to happen. Yeah. The Socialist Alternative says a successful revolution will involve workers taking control of their workplaces, dismantling existing state institutions, parliaments, courts, the armed forces and police, and replacing them with an entirely new state based on genuinely democratic control by the working class. Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah. How does it all work? How does it, like, if someone steals my shit? Or oh, I don't have any shit, do I? I have no private property to own for someone to steal. Well, you know, no one's going to come up and take your toothbrush out of your mouth. Why it's not? Like, why would we want to? It's your toothbrush. You just put all germs on it. Like, who the you go? All right, I'm just going to run through some things. You tell me whether or not we'll still have them post-revolution. Okay. Okay? Uber. No. The ABC. Ah, uh, no. Sorry. <laughs> Facebook? Some form of social media, I'm sure. Well, it won't be like, it won't be run by Mark Zuckerberg, let's put it that way. Okay. And it won't be snooped on. What's going to happen to him? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Ask the comrades in the United States. Oh boy. Facebook? Uh, yeah, probably a state owned <laughs> company, probably not. <laughs> state book. Netflix? Yeah. But it's free. And it's better. It has more stuff on it. Not like the Australian Netflix. <laughs> Slammed. Sunrise? Uh, definitely not. No. Sex toys? Sex toys that I've used, do I have to share them with everyone else? <laughs> no. Um, no, that's fine. That's I can keep those? Yeah, you keep those. Yes. <laughs> Day one of the revolution, what happens? Is it like, is it setting fire to something? Do we yeah. put people's heads on spikes? No, that's not day one. Okay. <laughs> you can be very glad that it's not going to be violent, but it's going to be crazy. Well, that's what I'm worried about. I've done quite well. I'm worried what's going to happen to me in the revolution. <laughs> oh, you will still be treated like a god. Oh, thank God. In a certain way, if you're a capitalist, right now you're not truly as powerful as you think you are. Because you're subject to the whims of the market. You know, well, actually, this is a taxpayer-funded um, organization. That's where all my yeah, yeah. So from. this is one of the one of the uh, benign legacies of of, uh, of socialism. Well, I guess the Marxist revolution is just around the corner, and capitalism is going to end and everything. But in the meantime, let's make some money, bitch. Marxism, get your Marxism. Hot, fresh Marxism, people. Now, all this is made by slave labor, exploited by capitalism. Yeah. So. And that's how we can keep prices so low. <laughs> Stop selling and do it. Don't be a mug. Anyway, look at this little mini Marxist. Fuck out of here. Bottle one second. Yeah. What's that? It's for the kids. Got to get them in young. All right. You're interested in buying something? What can I, what can I do you for? I really love to manifest your dreams. Manifest your dreams? Fantastic. That is just, uh, just 40 bucks. The low, low price of just $40 for that one. So, oh, thank you so much. That's fantastic. Thank you. Yes. The sister works, baby! Mwah. 
For country folk, back in the day, it was so difficult to find another human to breed with, they would organise fancy balls. Bachelors and spinsters would come from hundreds of miles around for some wholesome fun. Two very long glasses of ice cold milk, please, mate. <laughs> Jeez, and just like Star Trek, the next generation fucked it. But I heard of a party going on in a remote central Queensland town that promises to change all of that. And this particular party, the Taroon BNS Ball, is back after a 25 year hiatus, like a drunk phoenix rising out of the fires caused by human negligence. <laughs> Have you an espresso martini? No, um, no, sorry. Oh, it doesn't matter anyway, my Uber's here. <laughs> The organisers of the Taroom BNS promised ticket holders that this BNS would be a throwback to classier times. But can these two sisters hold back the hordes of bogans at the gate? A lot of young people would come to these things hoping to meet somebody. Five hundred people, you've got to hope you've got a chance. You've got, chance. Chance. If you've got 250 of the opposite sex, you might bump into somebody that you're attracted to. A BNS ball's necessary for the country because Tinder is shit house out here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guess you've got to set your radius to like 300 kilometres to get a match. Yes, so. <laughs> the radius for Tinder doesn't, yeah. doesn't reach far out here, that's for sure. No. <laughs> What specifically are you trying to avoid tonight? Little little bottles of like coloured food dye and just throw it over everybody. Like it's yeah, like bomb everyone with food dye. I heard in the pub that people smuggle it in, in their mouths. Ugh. But how do they talk if it's like in their mouth? I don't know. Country people don't open their mouths when they talk anyway. <laughs> 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 I'm not gonna see here. I suppose our aim is to bring back the class back into a BNS. True story. I was driving and I, I said, true, that might be a nice bloody town to go visit. I said, oh, I came in. It turns out the SNB is on tonight. <laughs> Room BNS. What's one of the craziest <laughs> stories you've heard happening at, at one of these? They used to have a thing they used to call a greasy pig, and they get like a wild pig and then grease it up. And all the every, all the young blokes when they were drunk used to have to try and catch it in like a big arena, like that. But I don't think that'd go down very well now. So, like a lonely bloke in the back of a ute, will they pull it off? I'm gonna get fucked up. In this is all this. A bit of book. Bit of, bit of wine. Why? Pims. Cheap Midori. Oh, I do love ginger ale. How hard was it to get the black tie outfit? Was it a challenge? No, nah, vintage, mate. Local vintage. A bit of ruler for me. Or rock in. Go down there, spend about four bucks, and you look like this. Pretty flat. Yeah. There they go again. Do you reckon it makes you look cool in front of the yeah, girls? Definitely, oh, definitely, 100%. Yeah, okay. I'm just writing my number because that guy's circle work was pretty good. Is it going to be a classy event? Well, I think that's the point of the ball gown and heels, but it never ends up classy because we all end up shit-faced afterwards. Inside, it was a different story. The BNS ball was filled with elegant young people with acres of land and heads of cattle, the kind of young people you could take home and introduce to your mother. How's the night turning out? Um, pretty good so far. We haven't had too many dramas. Look around, do you see any food dye? Not yet. Exactly. It in. It's a very classy venue, people. This BNS ball was far too sophisticated for this reporter. I guess it's up to me to fix it. <laughs> it's time to bring back some tradition. Hey, boy! On the greasy pig! Take me! Our stand-up guest tonight is easily the greatest UK-based French stand-up comedian around. He's set to perform this Friday at Sydney's Comedy Store and his show Wine List is at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival from April 10th. Would you please welcome Marcel Lucon? <laughs> Wow. That's some post-Easter applause right there. <laughs> Easter, of course, wants a festival of new life. How do most Australians celebrate Easter? Drinking themselves unconscious and force-feeding confectionery into the face of an already fat child. 
How are you celebrating new life this year? Oh, early death. There you go. <laughs> Have some more sugar in your already obese face. There you go. <laughs> Do that. Teaching children to accept gifts from enormous mammals. <laughs> Symbolism of the rabbit at Easter? Sex. Easter should be a sex festival. <laughs> We can still involve the rabbits and the eggs, just not the kind that we tell children about. <laughs> the more kinky bastards, they can keep the crucifixion element if they wish, that's up to them. <laughs> Once again, religion getting in the way of a perfectly legitimate celebration. <laughs> I cannot trust the Bible. It's too vague, you know. Oh, Jesus turned the water to wine. We are never told what grape, <laughs> what vintage. You know. The omission of facts like this could render such a book almost unbelievable. <laughs> I've been uh, touring your country. I've been, uh, I've been touring your country. I started in Perth, the wild west of Australia. <laughs> and you know it is wild, huh? Soon as you arrive, tells to you on the sign. It says, welcome to Perth. Wah! <laughs> <laughs> you know what you are getting, huh? The same with other cities, similar policy, you know. Adelaide is quite laid back, you know. Oh, welcome to Adelaide. Sha. <laughs> Don't really give a shit. You know. Darwin, quite feral. You know. So welcome to Darwin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Teeth. Melbourne seem to be welcoming only one person of the name Vic. <laughs> I knew it was cliquey, but wow, that's too much. <laughs> Your entire Australian news seems to be dominated by a cricketer rubbing a ball on his dick. It's bizarre. You know? I, I don't understand we're still watching sport now that Eric Antona is not in sport. It's boring, you know. That's a man who knew to fuck about with sport and do it well. <laughs> Brought things to the game we did not know it could be in the game. Huh? Poetry, humor, kung fu. <laughs> did not know that was... Well, it was not allowed, but it took him to, you know, show us that was the truth. Huh? <laughs> Now Cantona has moved on to better things than sport. Hmm? Now Cantona is making films that will be shown in Cannes. Most of your footballers, they're making films that will be shown in court. <laughs> Dirty bastards. Before Australia, I am uh, making the tour of the United Kingdom. To be in that country with a bank account full of euros. What a time to be alive. <laughs> For me, every hour was happy hour. <laughs> okay, to explain to the less knowledgeable, um, how to explain. In your country, you made the yes, no vote on whether persons who fuck in the ass should be married. <laughs> Britain, they made a yes, no vote whether to fuck themselves in the ass. <laughs> and they voted yes. It's a surprise to us, a surprise to them even. Oh, did we vote yes? <laughs> Why? <laughs> but truly, who is happy with their politicians? Eh? Myself, I think I will run for presidency of France next time. Why not? Hmm? 
one policy only, I plan to start a global referendum to get planet Earth to leave the solar system. <laughs> I think we are starting to be an embarrassment to the lumps of dust and rock that are floating around out there. <laughs> Time to go. <laughs> How will you achieve this, Marcel? I don't know. <laughs> There was no strategy for the Brexit. Why the fuck should I have a plan? <laughs> Vote for that shit, sort it out later. It's probably just a bit of admin. <laughs> well, you can only have so much of a good thing. I have been Marcel Lucan. You have been you. Well, that is great government comedy. Thanks for sticking around. We'll be back.